The tourism industry now has a large presence in the global economy. Especially in developing countries, it has become essential to people's livelihoods and even their countries. However, the COVID-19 pandemic that began late in 2019 has exposed inherent vulnerabilities in the tourism industry. Here's how a UN WTO expert describes those vulnerabilities. When a crisis occurs, it affects the destination's competitiveness in the eyes of uh, tourists and how uh, tourists uh, are receptive to visiting a destination. And likewise, uh, from a destination perspective, how a destination's operators uh, can operate during a time of crisis. The tourism sector is increasingly aware of the need for tourism crisis management to predict, prepare for, and recover from crises. For example, the UNWTO formed the INSTO network of 30 observatories to conduct monitoring and offer recommendations, looking ahead to the post-COVID tourism resurgence. Ms. Suzuki says, I think that safety and security are important keywords for restarting tourism. Insto observatories are now deliberating how to create indicators showing to what extent governments and tourism facilities fulfill international standards. By internationally promoting safety and security indicators, we can create successful branding for safe and secure destinations. JICA has also been collaborating with organizations like the UNWTO to conduct research and analysis and to provide support. Mr. Urano says, tourism is an industry, so if there's no economic benefit, then there's no point. Disasters are incidents that the industry has to deal with. A strategy for dealing with them well is a necessity for a sustainable business. It's something we cannot ignore. But what exactly is tourism crisis management? Let's hear from an expert. Welcome to the JICA session on Tourism Crisis Management. My name is Masato Takamatsu. I'm a moderator for this session. Today, I expect you to learn through this session about the significance and importance of tourism crisis management. To begin with, let's think that travel and tourism is vulnerable to disaster and crisis risks. The kind of disaster and crisis risks include natural disaster risks, such as earthquake, tsunami, volcanic eruption, cyclone, flood, wind gust, landslide, heavy snow, and also human-induced disaster risks, such as terrorism, fire, explosion, transportation accident, wide area power failure, and violent crime. And in addition to that, health risks. This is kind of thing that we are now experiencing worldwide. Epidemic, pandemic, and also food poisoning. And in addition to these risks, especially in the tourism sector, we experience perception and reputation crisis risks as well that always follow all these actual risks. Why tourism crisis management? Number one, tourism is an economic generator worldwide. It contributes 10.4% of the global GDP in 
2019. And tourism supports one out of 10 jobs in the world. It accounts for 330 million employment in the world. On the other hand, tourism is prone and vulnerable to crisis. Safety of the destination is a priority in the selecting holiday destinations. Just think about yourself when you choose a destination for your vacation. Would you rather go to a destination that is very risky or that has a lot of safety concerns? Definitely no. Destinations and tourism businesses are responsible for ensuring safety of visitors. That is why tourism crisis management is so critical and important for our businesses. How do we define tourism crisis? There's a long line of definition, but, but I don't go, want to go through all this. I'll just uh, share with you the bullet points of the definition. The tourism crisis is triggered by occurrence of the disaster or an incident or an abrupt change of market environment and also the reputation that follows the incident and when these happen and visitors and tourism businesses are significantly impacted we call it a tourism crisis then how do we manage the tourism crisis Tourism crisis management is organizational activities that include one, identifying the tourism crisis that significantly impact the visitors and tourism businesses. Identifying. Then, number two, implementing countermeasures to prevent and reduce the negative impact of the tourism crisis. Number three, Proactively preparing communication, evacuation to ensure the safety of the visitors at the onset of and during the tourism crisis events. Number four, educating and training the relevant personnel to be ready for the crisis. Number five, rapidly and appropriately responding to the crisis and the reputation by implementing the plan. And lastly, supporting the business continuity and early recovery of the affected tourism sector. So all these are the tourism crisis management. It's not just an, a single activity, but the, this whole activities, the set of the activities are called tourism crisis management. So this is the chart that illustrates tourism crisis management. There are two phases before the actual crisis and incident takes place, reduction and readiness. Then after the incident, response to the crisis and recovery from the crisis. All these four phases makes up the tourism crisis management. Before I share with you the, each of the, the four phases, I want you to uh, look at the first step for the crisis management. It is to identify risks. Should you fail to identify major risks, the unexpected takes place. The unexpected. This is the kind of word that we heard tens of thousands of times when we had major disasters, such as major earthquake in Japan 10 years ago. We anticipated the disaster, but never expected such a significant impact by the disaster. So all these things, the words, are summarized in one word, unexpected. And we cannot let this happen. Tourism crisis management, the key for the tourism crisis management is identifying the risks induced by the crisis, proactively planning countermeasures and prevention 
of the expected risks and preparing for a prompt and appropriate response to the crisis risks. So this is the very first step when you think about the crisis management. So let's start with the reduction. What does it mean? You can't fully prevent a disaster crisis from occurring. Just think about the earthquake. You can't stop it. Or typhoon. We don't expect, we, we don't hope that it will come, but it does. But you can reduce or mitigate the negative impact of the disaster and crisis to visitors and tourism businesses. So reduction includes mitigation of the potential risks and also minimizing the impact of the disaster crisis event on tourism sector, such as risk-informed investment for resilient infrastructure or removal of the risk factors before the incident occurs. Evacuation signage, shelters, and maps, they will definitely help to ensure the, the visitors' safety who experience the major disasters. And preparing emergency or communication tools and media, because oftentimes when there is a disaster, there is disruption of the communication, the ordinary communication such as telephone or even the internet. Another way to minimize the impact to the visitors is to early warning to visitors and businesses and encourage visitors to return home earlier than planned and refrain from visiting the potentially affected areas so that uh, when the, the disaster hits this destination, there was no visitors to be affected. Let's skip readiness and go to response phase. Response includes immediately following the onset of the disaster, activate the crisis response team, ensure the safety of the guests and employees, and make measures for post-crisis recovery. The first step in response is to activate the crisis response team. Then, ensure the safety of the visitors and travelers, including evacuation, rescue, and confirmation of their safety. And investigate the impact and share the information. Provide the visitors on site with necessary information because they really want to see and understand what's happening there. What are the further risks they are to experience? Information is so, so important, so critical for the visitors who are experiencing the disaster risks. And support the stranded visitors to travel home and onward. Then, communicate with business partners with the camp community at large. Because um, we, it is so important to include the community, uh, the business partners in the community when ensuring the safety of the visitors. And at the same time, address the reputation crisis and monitor what are the buzzwords around the, the internet. We also need to respond to the clients with bookings in, if uh, this operation is suspended. And lastly, and importantly, is especially for the business, secure finance for operation and secure employment of the workforce. So these are the kind of responses that we are supposed to do at the onset of the disaster. And the, these on the upper half are for the safety assurance of the visitors, whilst the lines uh, below are 
the actions for the business continuity. Let's talk about the, the, uh, what we can do for the safety and comfort of the visitors on the site. And one thing I want you to understand is that only tourism businesses on the service front can immediately respond to impacted visitors. Yes, there are, you know, the plans by the government, local governments, or, you know, municipalities, but those public sector cannot be uh, at the site of the disaster when it occurs. Visitors can hardly expect support from the public sector. So the role of the, the businesses, the tourism businesses, mostly private sector, on the service front is so significantly important. When something happens, let's think about it. Or just imagine if you, you are in a destination and experience this, you know, sudden occurrence of the disaster. What are your concerns? Your own safety? Or if you're with a family or friends, maybe you're concerned about the safety of the, uh, the accompanying family and friends. Or another thing that is really uh, concerning is how to get home or travel onward. And information communication is another thing that because of oftentimes your phones are not working, even the internet. And lastly, and also more, most importantly, what to drink, what to eat. So thinking about those things, the concerns, what can the businesses or the public sector do to, for the safety of the visitors. Three stages. Immediately following the crisis, of course, emergency alert to the visitors. Informing them that something, the disaster, the crisis is going to happen in a second. Make sure that everybody's safe and there. And after the initial impact of the event, what do the visitors want to know? They need information of what's happening and what's going to happen next. So provide the information to visitors in the affected destination. And also the collect and communicate the information of the uh, crisis situation, including information on the operation of the tourism services. This is to minimize the negative impact of the reputation crisis when the media emphasizes the damages and impact of the disaster. The, the people, the population tend to think that the entire area is badly affected and there's no word such as tourism or, you know, holiday, nothing like that. So, if something happens, let the market know that what is really damaged and suspend the operation and who are still continuing the businesses, tourist businesses. And if they know it correctly and accurately, they may rethink their cancellation of the visit. And after the crisis event, there are quite a number of the people was stranded and uh, difficult to go home. So support the early return home of those people. And if necessary, provide shelter, of course, food and uh, necessities to the visitors and evacuees. Okay, now let's think about the business continuity of the tourism destinations and tourism businesses when they experience their disasters. An impact of the disasters on the tourism sector includes physical impact and damages on tourism infrastructure, roads, railroads, and disrupted operation of the public transportation services. Also includes 
damage to the tourism properties and the facilities. Hotels, attractions, and because of this uh, physical impact, there will be a can uh, quite a number of cancellations due to the suspended operation of the tourism attractions and public transportation. In addition to that, psychological impact on potential visitors to the destination is quite significant because they feel safety concerns for visiting that, the impacted destinations. And reputation crisis may occur and that was further limit the number of the visitors after the disaster. And such impact is, uh, takes place in the destinations. There will be a downgraded destination image. Such and such, you know, place had a major crisis impact. That will definitely discourage the people to visit that destination. And when there is a decline of the visitors to that destination, the tourism businesses experience a challenge, big challenge. Decreased number of the visitors leads up to decline revenue. And that was, has a negative impact on their financial uh, situations, their cash flow, is lowered and they have to lend money from the bank and there will be an increase in debts. It has a lot of uh, negative challenges to the management. And also employment of the tourism workforce is at risk. If there is the, uh, you know, the risks and challenges in the management of the operator, the first thing the, the management think is to reduce the cost. And oftentimes, number one, the largest cost expenses for the tourism operators is a labor cost. So they reduce work time. They lay off employees. And we need to do something to reduce or stop these activities. And the impact is not only limited to the, what we call tourism businesses, but also to the business partners of the tourism sectors, such as food distributors, reassurance and assistance to the industry partners is very important in recovering the destination businesses. The first thing you want to think about is communicate official information to the tourism businesses in the community, what's happening. And also, when there is the uh, number of uh, displaced visitors, in other words, the, those who are stranded because of the, the disruption of the, the transportation, develop available room inventory to host those visitors safely and comfortably. And collect information about damage to the tourism facilities and physical injuries and death of the visitors. And in these actions, de destinations management organizations, DMOs, are expected to take destination leadership. Now, in order to uh, respond promptly and appropriately, we need to be prepared, well prepared, for the crisis event and their responses. Readiness ensures prompt and appropriate response immediately following crisis event. In the case of the earthquake, nobody knows what kind, how many times and how often we will experience the further aftershocks. And when there is an incident, it requires immediate decision 
in a very limited period of time. And there's lots of lots of decisions need to be made with a limited resources. Just imagine when the disaster occurs during the night. And when you if you are a hotel manager, night manager, how many staff people are available there on the site? Maybe two, three, four. And with that limited resources, you need to respond to the crisis. And if the decision making is inappropriate, it worsens the consequences. So with the very limited resources, you have to make a number of number of decisions appropriately and promptly. How can you do this? Readiness is the answer. When I talk about the, the readiness, I always um, use the word proactive, proactively. Prepare response before a crisis strikes. Proactive decision making. It enables immediate activation of the crisis response team. Appropriate response. Even if the, the leaders are not uh, present on site. You know, in, our, in, in the tourism businesses, the leaders, the managers, are often out of the, the site for the conferences, meetings, or business trips, etc. So just be prepared to respond without the leaders and consistent decision making, regardless of who is in charge. And when you make uh, the decisions proactively and put that together, you can make, you can develop the crisis management plan or response uh, manuals. But when you do that, many places, not limited in Japan, but elsewhere in the world, I see a lot of challenges in developing a tourism crisis management plan and crisis response manual, such as when the government, local government, public sector develop the, uh, the crisis response manual or, or the prevention uh, resilience plan, the main purpose of the existing disaster prevention plan is to ensure the safety of the citizens, not the visitors. Very few plans focus on the safety of the visitors or travelers. Number two, the necessity and importance of tourism crisis management is not widely shared, especially by the top of the organizations. And even if the organization makes a decision to develop such you know, plan or a manual, there's always a lack of expertise to develop tourism crisis management plans and manuals in the local destination organizations. Okay, we make plan? Who does? Nobody is able to do this. And in the public sector especially, I see a lot of cases where no one is responsible for resilience of the tourism sector because Neither the Department of Tourism or Disaster Prevention is in charge for this. The tourism sector people say, oh, we have no expertise in the resilience. And disaster prevention managers say, oh, we have no experience in tourism. Then who is in charge? So they have the, the Consensus to develop the plan, but here again, nobody wants to take that role. But anyway, when you prepare a crisis response plan manuals, these are the things that need to be included in the plan and manuals, such as maps of the destinations, not only the maps, it need to include the evacuation routes, safe routes, of course. 
or list of shelters to accommodate stranded visitors, not the vi citizens. And lastly, recovery. Recovery means returning to the organization to normal after a crisis and have visitors returning to a crisis affected destination as quickly as possible. In order to do that, post-crisis recovery includes infrastructure, supply chain, lifeline, transport and recovery, and recovery of tourism services, back to normal, and perception and reputation of the affected destinations to minimize and prevent the perception crisis. And in order to welcome back the visitors, we have to recover the visitors' traffic, the transportation. And lastly, when there are visitors coming back to your destination, you get finally the tourist revenue back to normal. And when you think about the recovery of the uh, damaged infrastructure, always think about build back better. It's a global shared concept of post-crisis recovery. So it means when recovering, rehabilitating the damaged infrastructure, try not to rebuild how it was before the crisis, but recover it to be more resilient and sustainable. And this is not only for the hard infrastructure, but also applies for the post-crisis recovery of the tourism products and services make them more attractive to the visitors, more value and economically sustainable, especially to the community, and more sustainable to the environment and to the destination communities. So communities is a key word in recovering the tourism sector. In order to uh, bring back the visitors to the affected destinations, have to do the post-crisis recovery marketing activities. And there's no major difference between the ordinary uh, destination marketing activities, but the only the difference is that the destination and also the tourism services are affected by the disaster and there are some changes in the perception of the destination by the market. So the first thing is to identify who would be the first to come back to the destination and focus on your marketing activity to, to that most potential market and segment after the crisis. And try to communicate what kind of uh, attractions you have for that particular uh, target market and segment, we are to come back first. And we also, it's a great idea to invite the national government or uh, national tourism organization, international organizations such as UNWTO or WGTC, PATA, IATA, into these recovery marketing actions because they are so willing to help us the affected destination go back to normal. I have gone through the four phases of the tourism crisis management, but before I uh, end this session, there's one thing I want to share with you. That is a word by a disaster prevention director. Uh, who was in charge of the disaster response when there was a major earthquake and tsunami in Japan in 2011. The citizens, they did what they were trained to do. They did what they were trained to do. And they could only do what they were trained to do and drill. They could only do what they were trained to do and drill. So even if you complete the beautiful tourism crisis management plan with 200 pages, unless you train the people and make drills, 
repeat drills, there will be nothing the people can do to ensure the safety of the visitors and tourism businesses. Thank you for joining me for this session. And I understand there will be a lot of people, uh, including the, the government officials or the tourism organizations or the business operators. But uh, I want to urge you to make, define your role in tourism crisis management and also collaborate with other sector to uh, respond to the crisis comprehensively as a destination. And another thing I want you to do is not just uh, say, oh, that was a good session, I really enjoyed it, but maybe today or tomorrow, start thinking about how you can actually put that into your actual action and make this happen in your destination. Once again, thank you for joining me for this session.